So I'm taking a photography chip to capture the epic gorges and waterfronts of the Finger Lakes. And I'm using all this gear you see right in front of me, but I spent several thousand dollars on all this gear. So I started wondering, do I really need all this to capture epic landscapes and travel photography? The Finger Lakes were created by the last ice age as the glaciers receded. They carved through the earth, creating deep valleys in their wake, which left behind beautiful gorges and waterfalls, as well as the iconic Finger Lakes. There are several Finger Lakes, but the two most common that people visit are Cayuga Lake and Cynic Lake. While the lakes themselves are absolutely beautiful, what's tucked behind them, in my opinion, is even more epic. You find these massive gorges with absolutely epic waterfalls, making it an absolute perfect destination for the explorer or nature photographer out there. So the Finger Lakes and areas around it is absolutely amazing. I also wanted to talk about something else, and it's this like idea that if you want to start off photography, you need to go out and buy the best gear imaginable. And that can be very expensive, when in reality, there's a ton of stuff you can do to start learning the tools of photography, and all you need is usually in your pocket. So I want to talk about a few things you can start working on today without buying a camera, just by using your smartphone. In my opinion, the most impactful thing when learning any type of photography is composition. Practicing composition does not require an expensive camera and implementing good compositional practices is gonna greatly improve any type of photography. Take this photo of a dock. This photo was taken on an iPhone and it feels like an extremely balanced photo. Well, I use a very common photography tool called the rule of thirds, which basically is an art principle that splits up your image in threes, both horizontally and vertically. Now, while you can always center a subject in any of these uh, boxes you see here, these intersecting points, there's four of them, are extremely compelling points when composing images. I use this principle in this photo, as you can see, I use this intersecting point to center the dock, which helps bring your eyes into the photo a bit more. Now, I really like using the rule of thirds, but Another compositional tip that I always like to incorporate is leading lines. See, I have this road here, and I'm gonna go ahead and try and angle my phone and my camera. So the phone kind of starts from one angle of the screen and leads off to the other, and that's gonna help bring your, you know, your attention to the center of the photo. So let's go and take this photo. I'm gonna go ahead and angle this photo and just point it a little bit closer to the ground. And I'm gonna take this half of the road over here and bring it over here so it brings your viewer's attention to the center of the screen. And here's the photo after I did a quick edit. This is just one example of how you can use leading lines. As you can see, you can use multiple things for this concept, a stone wall, a lakeside, or anything that gives you a clear defined line. Try and be creative, think objectively, and you can come up with some pretty great ideas. All right, so a compositional tip that I would have when shooting wide on this iPhone 13 millimeter, the 0.5 on the phone, is get low to the ground. You wanna incorporate some sort of like foreground element like these leaves. And what this is gonna do is gonna kinda of make your photo a little bit more three-dimensional. There's gonna be a front layer, like the leaves or the, the ferns, the tiny green plants out there, a mid layer, which is gonna be like the forest, and then like the sky is the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I mean here. So we're gonna go ahead and switch this to the wide angle and it, so you can get a lot wider. Then we're getting nice and low to the ground and get these nice and close to the camera. And we're gonna go ahead and snap a shot here. And then taking a look at this photo that we took, we can see there's clearly like a front, a foreground, and a background. And a wide angle focal length is just gonna help you get that that much better. Everyone loves a good comparison. Let's do one right now. I'm gonna go ahead and play a few photos back to back. And I want you to identify down in the comments which one you think is the iPhone photo. Phones are getting pretty crazy these days. The song and dance goes, phones are getting increasingly better every single year with photography. It's getting harder and harder to depict the difference between a professional camera or like an iPhone. Even today with the iPhone 15 Pro, I've seen several wedding videographers out there shoot an entire wedding just using the iPhone and the wedding looks amazing. So there was all the photos. Please let me know if you were able to identify any of the iPhone photos when looking at them. A lot of smartphones these days has multiple lenses. This iPhone 13 Pro has three in total. It has a 13 millimeter, a 25 millimeter, and a 77 millimeter equivalent focal length. Now you can figure out those focal lengths on Google for your various smartphones out there. They're all gonna be a little bit different, but it's very important to know what your focal lengths are in your phone. Now, if we open up our camera app, you can see the 0.5, that's gonna simulate the 13 millimeter the one which is gonna be simulating the 25 millimeter, and the X3, which is gonna be simulating the 77 millimeter. Those are gonna be your true focal lengths. When you pinch down and zoom in and out, you can see them kind of getting different numbers here, like 2.8. Now those are gonna be impacted by digital zoom. If you wanna get the best photos on your phone, try and avoid that digital zoom. Try and stick to your main focal lengths 
on your particular phone. Like I said, for this iPhone, it's the 0.5, the 1, and the 3X, which will help result taking the best photos on your iPhone or other phone. Now, when you're first starting off photography, you're not really sure how focal lengths kind of impact your shot. Let me give you a little bit of a rundown here. So when you're shooting in like 13 millimeters, it's gonna make it look very wide like a GoPro or action camera, making the edges look very wide and the center look a little bit more narrow. Now on most phones, the primary lens is gonna be around 25 millimeters. This is still a very wide shot, but it's a lot less bubbly overall. And it's also most likely gonna be the best quality camera on your phone. And lastly, here's an image using the 77 millimeter. As you can see, it's a very compressed looking image. And this compression can be utilized in various things. Most portrait photographers out there, they like to utilize 85 millimeters for portrait photography because it's gonna give you the most natural looking face and body overall. So if you're doing something like portraits or taking photos of someone, or if you wanna kinda of like bring your environment closer to your subject, even though it's far away, use 77 millimeters because that's gonna help compress the image more and it will result in your best portraits as well it's gonna help you get, uh, you know, better landscape photos depending if you wanna take, get a closer shot of something. Take a moment to envision your own photography journey. Your phone can truly be the gateway into this world of taking breathtaking photos of landscapes and nature. By embracing the affordability and accessibility of your phone, it will allow you to embark on your creative journey without going out and buying a camera today. If you live in the area and you haven't visited the Finger Lakes yet, remember, it's more than just lakes and wineries. There are beautiful gorges and waterfalls to visit, and these locations will truly feel as if you're transported into another world. I'm excited for you to start or continue your journey into the world of photography. And if you subscribe to my channel, I'd be very excited to help you grow in that journey. If you are interested in learning more about composition, please check out the suggested video at the end here. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video.